doing great and today i'm going to talk about um, the various software development approaches which are used in the industry i know whenever uh, we use this word software development approaches or how do i develop the software i think uh, two things come to our mind either developing a software or a product using a traditional way of working uh, which is popularly called as a waterfall or a hdlc life cycle the software development life cycle or applying the agile practices or an agile way of working which is more adaptive in nature by which we mean that my requirements evolve over a period of time uh, but no i'm not going to talk about these two approaches today in fact the purpose of this video is to share with all of you some of the other approaches which are also equally popular and used in the industry and these approaches came in much before the industry shifted into an agile way of working and some of the organizations still continue to follow these software development approaches so there's a misconception that you know what um, suddenly um, uh, agile came one fine day morning and the entire industry shifted into an agile way of working as i said uh, 70s and 80s when software industry was pretty much nascent they were following a traditional way or a hdlc model as we popularly called uh, and 2001 is when agile manifesto came into existence but between uh, this era there are a lot of organizations which have used some of the software development approaches uh, which i am going to talk about today okay so the first one which i'm going to talk about is what we call as the v model of software development it is also called as verification and a validation model uh, or the v model of software development what we call it now this model came in as an improvement over the traditional waterfall approach i think we all know that one of the challenges of a traditional waterfall approach is that my testing phase was backloaded which means my testing used to happen towards the end v model did try to improve this with a with some degree of success by doing development and testing activities parallel so at the time when the team is capturing requirements your testing team was working in tandem with your development team in capturing the acceptance test scenario so that was a marked improvement over the traditional way of waterfall development where testing activities used to start later although this model still had some lacuna like for example the actual execution of testing still happens towards the end of the life cycle all right uh, let's move to the next model the next model we have is an iterative and incremental approach in an iterative and incremental approach uh, i would say this is a precursor before agile ways of working came into existence you have a product let's say take an atm machine you are not going to deliver 100 features of atm machine after 100 days you are going to deliver that most important feature in next 20 25 one month or a two month period and then the product is going to increment itself and evolve over a period of time so iterative and incremental approaches were also used much before agile came into existence as i said the example being an atm machines when atm machines were launched in 70s and 80s to enable customers to withdraw cash the first iteration had only one important feature and that one important feature was ability to withdraw cash or providing a feature for customers to withdraw money from their bank account and subsequently this iteration was incremented by adding more and more features as the time elapsed all right another interesting model rapid application development in a rapid application development as you can see in the picture um, this kind of a model or this kind of a software development approach is used where you can have independent teams working on a feature and there are suitable integration points and checkpoints between these teams so let's take an example of a smartphone there are so many features in a smartphone what i will do is um, i will have one team working on let's say the camera functionality another team working on let us take for example the calling feature the third team working on the connectivity features so we have three parallel tracks going on and there will be suitable integration checkpoints between these teams. this 
was again something which was very widely used and in fact it still continues to be used in the industry uh, to develop products at a faster pace rapid application development model one of the challenges in this model is you need to have integration touch points also this model leads to a duplicacy of risk you will need a similar kind of resources across all the three tracks or four tracks or teams whatever uh, the last model which I'm going to talk about in this video is the spiral model of product development. A spiral model of product development is very useful when the customer is exploring an idea, predominantly for an R&D kind of a work. So you have a proof of concept or an um, idea, but that idea is not fully baked or that idea is not fully known. So you work with the customer as a developer, a QA and a, let's say an architect, we all work with the customer and we try to prototype this product and based on the feedback, we try to further refine the prototype. Now, one of the challenges in this model can also be that at the end of, let's say, prototype one or two, the customer might realize that this is not going ahead anywhere. Let's scrap this idea altogether. So that's a risk what we are carrying. but. It's a good model from an experimentation perspective. And in fact, many good products have come out using this spiral mode of development in a cyclical manner. Uh, you work around during these prototypes and your final prototype is something which would be like an MVP or a minimum viable product, which can be then showcased to our few of our customers before we launch a full-fledged MMP or a minimum marketable product of this or a minimum marketable product. All right. So these are some of the models what we have seen apart from the traditional waterfall model and an agile model or an agile way of working. And I'm sure um, you got a good insight into how the software industry uses some of these models to build world-class products what we all use. So I hope this uh, short video was interesting and you learned something new today. Uh, this is Ashutosh Bhattodekar signing off for the moment. Uh, do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more such interesting videos. Bye for now and thank you.